part in this uh, exhibit. Um, as Leila said, we did plan to do this a couple years ago and uh, had to work around a couple of lockdowns. I don't know if you heard um, that something, <laughs> something was going on. Um, so I'm very happy to be here too. And the show has evolved over the last couple of years and includes uh, a couple of new works. So I hope you enjoy them. Um, I just want to talk uh, very briefly about some of these paintings. Um, I paint uh, in order to capture moments. Um, I think there are only two things in this life that are true, um, and that is that we are born, and that is one day our life will come to an end. And it is a succession of moments that we experience between one thing and the next that makes a life and makes us who we are. And in talking about identity and identifying as Algonquin and Anishinaabe and also my beautiful mother who's also an artist and her Scottish roots, I've always had sort of a collaborative identity, I guess, um, and we are all very much the result of our ancestors, our parents and our grandparents. Um, and I'm really happy to have my mom here and my daughter here and my sister here today. So each of these uh, paintings is a moment um, captured that has some significance to me that I wanted to share with all of you. Um, I grew up in many places for many reasons, um, mostly out west through Alberta and BC as a child and um, we traveled a lot through the prairies and I found it just incredible that you could drive for literally an entire day and all you see are these gorgeous grasslands and fields and farms and there's so much uh, fertility there but when a storm is coming in you can see it like a wall just just coming across uh, the fields and I always thought that that looked so tremendously powerful you also notice in the prairies a lot of oil fields and a lot of oil rigs and this painting um, is about balance. It's about the balance of power. It's about the balance of, of mother nature and uh, the power that this planet has uh, versus um, the power of the oil companies and the petroleum companies and our financial obligations that we have in this lifetime. I feel like a lot of our identity is attached to our professions. I feel like a lot of our identity is attached to social media um, and we are very distracted, so distracted in fact that when people ask you who you are, they ask you what you do for a living. Um, and I'd like to say I identify as an uh, Algonquin Anishinaabekwe artist, um, when in fact I do have another career. Um, I work with children <laughs> and, uh, and that's a part of me too, but it's not just who I am. So these moments that you see are all moments that honor a piece of time in my life between the time of my birth and the time of my death that means something to me. And it's meant to remind all of us that in every day, even the dark days and even the really crappy ones, there's, there's a light. There's a piece of gold in there. You just have to look for it. And you keep those moments like snapshots in your mind. And then I just paint them. <laughs> um, so, if you take away anything from the show, it's that. I'm sure you all have a snapshot in your mind that is meaningful, and um, I paint for many reasons, but, but that's the biggest one. Um, and that's how we should identify in our life, is who we are, and, and how we experience those moments, and who we are to our children, and to our parents, and to our grandparents, um, because it's limited. Anyway, not to be a downer. <laughs> um, so some of these uh, paintings have some, some meaning that is uh, a little more political. I think we live in an age of reconciliation and being a woman uh, in this time who's raising both sons and daughters um, who are also have a mixed heritage but who are very much in touch with their Anishinaabe selves. I think that reconciliation starts with change and change starts inside. It starts, it starts inside each person. It's an internal change that happens to bleed out externally. And that's where we're at now, is there's an internal change that's been brewing for a while, 
and now it's out there in the open, in the public, and that reconciliation is, is a collaboration of identities. It's a collaboration of, of love and of people who can come together regardless of our, our, our bloodlines and our history and make a better world for our kids. So um, a lot of these paintings are about reconciliation and about hope, and that's why there's so much light in them. So thank you very much for coming. Um, I'm not going to drone on forever. I will mention I, I came with prints, so if you are asking about prints of any of these pieces, there are a few here, but I do have more in my home studio. So just let me know if that's something you're interested in or talk to the gallery staff, talk to Leela um, or Lynn or uh, anyone here um, in the gift shop and I can arrange to send some down for you. Okay, Nigwich, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, if anyone has questions. <laughs> yes. Fragile. Um, I think that there is a, a fragility, a fragile balance in nature. And I think we forget sometimes that we're not just uh, walking computers, that we are actually a piece of the earth. We're made from all of the same things that the heron is made from, that the bear is made from, that this, this bison is made from. We're made from the same things that grow our plants and feed us every day. Um, and that balance is sacred. And that balance is going to continue regardless of the damage that we do. Um, so I think that fragile is to describe our relationship with the earth our relationship to each other and our relationship to nature. That's why there's so many creatures here. I think they all represent a little piece of ourselves. Um, I see my grandmother and the chickadee, I see, and in the, the butterflies. I love the monarchs so much. The butterfly song is, means a lot to me. I feel very connected to my grandmothers through butterflies. Um, so each of these little creatures in each of these moments is just a piece of that balance and we need to remember that. Can you talking about it with Mama yes. Kelly when you brought your work in? Well, Mama Bison, and again, this is my love of the West um, growing up and traveling out there, and I do go back to, um, to visit my friends and family, and I'm still, every time you drop in Abbotsford into that Fraser Valley, it's just like an enormous um, spiritual thing anyway for me. Um, I know that there, there was a, a bunch of woodland bison through the prairies in Alberta, that were hunted to near extinction. And these bison um, became protected and they were so close to extinct, the government got involved and it was the Canadian and the US government that uh, found another species of woodland bison, I think in Montana, I'm not sure, to, don't quote me on that. Um, but they brought some of those bison to the prairies hoping that they would interbreed because they genetically were close enough and they tried this with, I don't know, a couple of hundred bison and, and intertwined their herds. And in the first year, some of them died. They shared a, a virus that was um, foreign to the Canadian bison. And it was not successful. Um, you know, when you breed like a mule, they're, they can't have babies, right? It's like the horse and the donkey thing. Um, so there was a bit of that. They couldn't, uh, they couldn't create another generation. But they tried again, they had some vaccinations to combat the, um, the viruses that were killing off some of these bison. And then finally, I think it was 2014, they finally had a baby. <laughs> so this is the mama bison and her little baby bringing back the woodland bison to the prairies in Canada um, and rejuvenating this a near extinct species. So this is a celebration of life. You're welcome. Her eye. <laughs> yes, this is the this is the creator in her eye. Yeah. So, if anyone else has any questions, or if you're walking around and looking and you want to ask me, like, what why did you paint this? Um, feel free. Don't be shy. I will answer. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>